Hello everyone, welcome to Explore Electronics. In this video, let us see the next concepts of analog and digital communication chapter that is pulse modulation, PAM, PWM, PPM and PCM. First, what is pulse modulation? Pulse modulation, the signal is going to be transferred in form of pulses. What do you mean by a pulse? We need to understand first. Pulse is a signal which will be having a low value for a certain period of time and then it becomes high and then it becomes low and then it becomes high. For a certain amount of time, this pulse will be having 0 and then 1. Similarly, this cycle continues. This will be called as a pulse. So pulse will be a signal, it will be having a combination of 0 and 1 for a certain amount of time. This period will not going to be changed. Throughout the pulse, it will be having a constant duration. So this kind of signal will be used as a carrier in pulse modulation. So in analog pulse modulation, a continuous signal will be given as an input, means modulating signal will be a continuous signal and whatever the carrier we are going to use, that will be like a pulses. Let us understand the different categories in pulse modulation. In analog modulation, we have PAM, PWM and PPM. In digital modulation, we will be having PCM, that is pulse code modulation and delta modulation. What is PAM? PAM is Pulse Amplitude Modulation. You can see here in this waveform, this is a message signal or it will be called as a modulating signal. As we know, in the previous video also we have seen modulation. So this signal will be called as modulating signal. This will be called as carrier signal. Since it is a pulse here, carrier wave is a pulse kind of input we are going to give. That's why we are calling it as carrier pulse train. Why it is calling it as train means a continuous values are there until we will be having a modulating signal up to that time we will be having a carrier pulse like this. And let us understand how this PAM signal is generating. This is a modulated signal now. So after the modulation what we are going to get? It is a modulated signal. Before the modulation we will be having modulating signal. It is a simplest form of modulation technique we can say. In the pulse modulation it is a simplest form. So here the signals are going to be sampled at regular interval you can observe. This is what the signal. We are going to sample this at regular interval of time like this. At each and every pulses means at each and every regular intervals as per the carrier is concerned. We are going to plot with respect to the amplitude is concerned. So as amplitude increases in the modulating signal, here in the modulated signal the pulse kind of output will be available as amplitude increases here also pulse amplitude increases and similarly pulse amplitude decreases this will be called as pulse amplitude modulated signal here each sample you can consider this as a sample it is proportional to the amplitude you can observe as the modulating signal amplitude is the modulated signal amplitude will be this is the disadvantage of this PAM what is the disadvantage means the signals which are the pulses are with different amplitude. We can't make the amplitude as constant here. So let us, let us look at PWM now. In PWM, it is pulse width modulation. In the previous case, pulse amplitude modulation, we are going to vary with respect to the amplitude of the signal is concerned. Here also we are going to consider the amplitude of the modulating signal itself. Here also the carrier is, is train of pulses, but the width of the signal is going to be varied. In the modulated signal, you can observe here the width is going to be changed. This width is different. This width is different. This width is different. This width is different. So depending on the amplitude of the modulating signal, if the amplitude is maximum, you can observe the width of the signal is maximum. When amplitude is at the minimum, the width of the signal is minimum. So this is what the pulse width modulation is. Here PWM, each pulse duration is made proportional to the instantaneous value of the modulating signal. Instantaneous value in the sense, at every instance, what is the amplitude will be called as instantaneous value, the amplitude of the signal. So pulse starting time will be same as the carrier pulse. You can observe here, this pulse is starting with this time. Again, the second pulse is starting with this time. Third pulse is starting with this time. As the carrier signal transition from 0 to 1, at the same time, here the pulse is starting. But the width is going to be varied according to the amplitude of the modulating signal. Here you can observe the modulated signal amplitude is constant. The constant amplitude we are going to get at the modulated 
signal but the width is going to be varied as long as this width of the output signal or the modulated signal is more if the width is more what we say here the power requirement is more if we are going to transmit one signal continuously for a longer duration of time here the transmitter requires a high power device okay that is what the thing here we need to understand in pulse width modulation and you can observe the next thing that is pulse position modulation here here it will be uh, looking same as pwm but there is a difference between pwm as well as ppm you can see here the amplitude is constant and it will be also like a pulse but the thing is the width of the signal is constant here the width of the modulated signal what we have is a constant value but the duration between the each pulses means from here to here there will be a huge gap this will be depending on the amplitude of the modulating signal here amplitude and width of the pulses are keeping constant and only the position of the pulses are going to be varied this pulse will be at this position the next pulse will be after some time means this time represents the maximum amplitude that's why the name has given as pulse position modulation then we have pcm that is pulse code modulation here the thing is this pcm is a digital technique so the modulation will be occurred with respect to the pulses concerned but the analog signal is going to be converted into a digital form you can see here the analog signal get converted into a digital form in order to have a signal transmission through a digital network here the analog signal is a modulating signal the signal to be modified will be called as modulating signal so this analog signal will be converted into digital form it requires pcm encoder the pcm encoder means pulse code modulation encoder is required this device consisting of a sampler it will be called as the process will be called as sampling and then quantizer it will be called as quantizing and then encoder the process will be called as encoding the three devices within the pcm encoder are sampler quantizer and encoder what this sampler is going to do it is making the samples out of this particular signal it is going to make the samples like this what quantizing is going to do it is going to make the assignment of values for each and every levels this will be called as a quantizing levels this will be called as a pulses or the samples x axis will be called as the samples and in the y axis we can say these are the quantizing values so output of the sampler you can see this is what the output it will be exactly same as the pam signal so pam is the output of the sampling we can consider so at the output of the quantizing you can observe these lines so these are the different levels we are going to consider for assigning the values once we are going to encode these levels of inputs by considering the pam output we are going to get certain values by the combination of zeros as well as ones the combination of zeros and ones will be called as a digital output so to get the digital output these two binary values are going to be used as 0 and 1 the combination of that will be assigned to a particular signal that will be called as finally a digital data so to understand this we need to understand what is sampling as well as quantization you can see here this blue line indicating analog signal to be modified this will be a modulating signal so the green line indicating quantized signal at this point we will be having one sample at this time we will be having one more sample so the quantization says from this point to this point there will be a transition this is one level of quantization and this is the another level of quantization at this point and this is the another level of quantization similarly the digitized points are going to be available at these instances will be coded as 001 011 110 110 something like 110 likewise these are the different pulses at different positions and these are the values so in the next video let us understand what is sampling theorem and what is the condition to get the digital output correctly thank you